so I can't give you a generalization unless you want to start saying if it's above but the axis of rotation is below the x-axis, then you start getting all these different classifications and then it becomes why even generalize then? Because it's not general enough. You know? Yes? I think the best way to generalize is imagine it's exactly the way that you can set this point. Imagine you're standing on the axis of rotation and you're looking what's farther away and what's closer. Everyone kind of, uh, everyone kind of see things differently, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't really talked to you all about how I wound up here standing in front of this classroom. You know, but I never intended on teaching. I studied math because I enjoyed it. It was a challenge. I loved the challenge. I wound up teaching because it was part of my duties in graduate school to teach. I had to. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I'm just going to go up there. I'm just going to explain it the way it makes sense to me. And if, you know, if that works, it works. And it turned out that when I did that, I explained it the way it made sense to me. A lot of students actually, it made sense to them that way as well, or it made better sense than it had before or something. So I only explain it to you the way that it makes sense to me. And so when I say I'm standing and I'm looking, that's the way I look at it. Well, you read a textbook, this can be different, you know? I'm just showing you the way I do it. So however you want to view it, you view it. That's why sometimes my, t my technique of teaching doesn't work for everyone because not everyone sees it the way I see it. And so they see it a different way and maybe a different instructor that would be, work out better for them, you know? Okay, we need to do all these around, we, we, you know, we've got this, 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 right? Let's go around now the y-axis. Okay, so we've got, uh, let me put the region back up here kind of, it was something like this. You know, whatever. It was like that, right? It was e to the x on top, and it was natural log x minus x plus 2 on the bottom, and this was 1, and that was 2. I, I want to wrap this around the y-axis, but I'm still using a vertical rectangle, right? So my axis of rotation is here now, right? Shells, all right? Automatically, I'm shells, right? So maybe this will help you when you do shells. At the very beginning of the problem, just always go from the y-axis to your rectangle is x, every time. y-axis to rectangle, not axis rotation to rectangle, y-axis to, to um, axis rotation. That's always x, okay? Now, what we need to do for the formula is we need to do 2 pi, let me put it over here, 2 pi, integral from a to b, now a to b here would be 1 to 2, and then what we need to do here is we need this, I call it, in the, in the notes, I'll go with what the notes say, capital R. Capital R is the distance from the axis of rotation to your rectangle, which happens to be what here? X, right? And then times the F of X minus G of X, which is the thickness or height of that shell, right? That's this. F minus G, and then DX, which is that little thickness of that slab that we had, right? I'm talking about this little slab that we had. The thickness of it was DX. So it's the, it's the thickness, DX, times the height, which is this, times the circumference when we unwrapped it, which is the 2 pi times that. Okay, so let's come over here. Let's do this one. This one will be using shells. 2 pi, integral from 1 to 2, the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle, x, and then it's just the top function minus the bottom function. And we are done. Okay? There's no squared, there's no r out, there's no r in, not on shells. On shells, all you have, the most important aspect of shells is this r right here. It is the distance from your axis of rotation out to your rectangle. And I, I, uh, I blacked out for like a little bit. So r is x. In this particular case. Let me do the next example. r is going to be something different in the next example. OK, so let me do the next one. Yes? OK, on the next one, we're going to go around x equals negative 2. I'm going to do a new picture. So here, here's my region. I'm getting real sloppy with this now. Right? That's e to the x. That's natural log x minus x plus 2. This is 1. This is 2. 
right? That's my region. Yes. I have a vertical rectangle in here. And my axis of rotation is over here at negative 2. These are parallel, right? Rectangle and axis of rotation are parallel. I'm using shells. So the most important aspect of shells is to figure out the distance from the axis of rotation to my rectangle. From here to here, I have to figure out. That's capital R. What I know, though, is that from the y-axis to the rectangle is x. Right? So if from here to here is x, then from here to here is that x plus 2. <laughs> oh, yes? That look, I'm looking at him. You, you, have, you have this look, like that look, and then, but it was, then you said, yeah, so that's your look of everything's euphoric, I guess. Okay. So let's do it. We've got 2 pi, right? 2 pi, integral 1 to 2, r, which for us is x plus 2. You can say 2 plus x. Okay, and then this part's the easy part, just top minus bottom. e to the x minus, in parentheses, natural log x minus x plus 2. All that dx, we're done. Yes? Why can't you just always use shells? Why can't you do shells all the time? Because, well, you have to have the parallel to do shells. Yeah. Because if you, if this was, well, if your axis of rotation is like this, right? Yeah. Then when you wrap that, you don't, you have the washer, right? You have the washer. The thickness, the thickness of the washer is dx, right? Yeah. Not this, this part's not dx. In shells, this part's dx. In washers, this part's dx, and this part is r out minus r in. Yeah. So it's, it's a different geometry when you rotate it that way. I'm going to do the next one. Did you, you draw another one. Draw it again. Would I, would I like you to draw it on the test? Well, it's worth, you know, here you saw it's worth 20 points, right? You should probably take your time and get it right. So. It'll be, it'll take the whole class, that's for sure. I don't know if that's what you're asking me. But I don't know who said that. Uh, like the questions, like is there going to be any questions? I'm not sure yet. We'll have to look. It'll be, it'll be, be what I expect you can do in, an, in 100 minutes. I mean, you saw today what I expected you could do in, what, 13 minutes? Yeah. Right? I expected you could do that in 13 minutes with your notes, right? So... All right, let's let's keep going. I'm I'm we're so far behind. Let's let's um, get the rectangle in here. Here's our axis of rotation, right? Shells. Yes. I need to know the the. I said put x here first if you like, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. That's x from the y-axis to the rectangle. Capital R. Capital R is the distance from, capital R is the distance from, from the, uh, axis rotation to the, to, the, to the rectangle. That's R. From the axis of rotation to the rectangle. Yes? X is always from the y-axis to the rectangle. Okay, X is always the y-axis to the rectangle. R is always your axis of rotation to your rectangle. Now, if the, the x-axis and the, y, and the axis of rotation are the same, then r and x are exactly the same thing. But when they're not the same, then you have to actually draw a little picture. So r here, we know the distance all the way from here to here is 3, right? That's fixed. So we're trying to figure out what r is. It would be 3 take away x. And that would be r. So r minus x? No. We have to replace r in here with 3 take away x. 3 take away x. Yes or no? You sure? 3 take away x is r. No. r is not always x. r is always the distance from the 
Axis of rotation to the rectangle, right? X is always the distance from the y-axis to the rectangle. It's always x. The only thing that is always the same, like x will always be the distance from the y-axis to the rectangle. R will always be the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle, but this R is going to vary. Like the value of it will vary. Sometimes it's x, sometimes it's 3 minus x, sometimes it's 3 plus x. Right? It's just going to depend on the geometry of the problem. So I'm going to set this up. Here we go. This is going to be 2 pi, because I'm using shells. Integral uh, 1 to 2. R, which is 3 minus x, two terms, must put in parentheses. And then f of x minus g of x. e to the x minus parentheses natural log x minus x plus 2 dx. Do you see that when you actually start to really wrap your head around this, these problems will be a little bit faster than they initially appear to be? Yeah. Yes? Okay, x equals 1 is our last one here. So for this one, I'm going to draw this region. Okay, it was at 1 and 2, and this was my region in here. That was e to the x up top, natural log x minus x plus 2 on the bottom. My axis of rotation is here, right? And I have my rectangle here. So they're parallel, so I'm using shells. The distance from the y-axis to the rectangle is x. x. From here to here is x, right? R is the distance from the uh, axial rotation to the rectangle. That's here to here. That's r, right? So how are you going to figure out what r is? You know the distance from here to here is what? Always. Like in this particular problem, our axis of rotation, this is 1, right? So if I want to know what r is, I take the x and I subtract the 1. So it's x minus 1. So this will be 2 pi integral 1 to 2, x minus 1 times e to the x minus parentheses natural log x minus x plus 2. All of that dx and I'm done. So in the notes that I showed you a second ago, right, that are online available to you in color, I, I, it says it right here. R is the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle, right? So when you go back and look at this, this might make a little more sense now. All right, we've got nine minutes. I, we need the nine minutes. I'm not, we're not going anywhere. I'm going to say that I'm concluding... Um, I'm concluding with the idea of, of washers and shells, all right? But there's still another topic in this section that we need to discuss. I can at least plant, like help plant the seed here. Um, no, we're not in chapter six. I can never predict how long I'm going to spend on these sections. It it's always differs every semester. All right. We've got, we've got the region between two curves, right? And we could find that area, right? We could find the area. That's what this whole uh, chapter started with, right? The area, not volume, not wrap anything. We find the area between these curves. We could also take this region and possibly wrap it around different lines above it and below it and to the side, right? We could do that using washers or shells. Um, but now what I'd like for you to do is think about this. Totally different concept. Imagine that this right here, this region, is the bottom of a solid. Okay, so it's, it's I'm going to have this solid, this solid object, okay, just, just this solid object. And when I place it onto the ground, 
This is the footprint of that object on the ground, okay? That region is the footprint. And now I'm gonna tell you a little bit, about, a little bit more about this object. If I were to come in here with like a, a knife, see, you're not allowed to see it yet. If I come in here with a knife, and, I, and that knife is, uh, if I take that knife and I cut th the object, so the solid is actually coming out at us, right? If I come in here with a knife that is perpendicular to the x-axis and I take a slice of it, right, like that, and I take it like that and I show it to you from the side, you have, you have a, a, a semicircle. Yeah. Okay, I'm telling you what it looks like, okay? So if I cut it right here and take that little slice off, I'm telling you, you'll have a half circle. Where this distance here is the diameter of that circle. So it would be a really small little sliver of a half circle. If I cut it right here, oops, shit. If I cut it right here and take that piece off, this distance from here to here is the diameter of that circle. So when I put, pick it up and, and let you look at it, it's going to be a bigger semicircle, isn't it? And when I go into the middle and cut it and open it up, it's the biggest it's ever going to be, right? What's the volume of that object? That's the question. No, no, the whole thing. So based on what I just said, that's the footprint of the object. And any cross section you take is going to form a semicircle. I want to know the volume of it. The question is, what is, it, what is its volume, right? Let's, let's first see what it looks like. Would you all like to see what it looks like? Here's what, here's what a slice looks like, OK? That's what a slice looks like. And if I move this slice around, the slice gets smaller. Now, you're, you're probably sitting there going, why didn't you just show me that in the beginning, right? Well, here's the, the, the way the problem would be posed is the, the um, the region between the, these two curves forms the base of a solid where cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis form semicircles. Find the volume of that solid. That's the way it would be posed to you. There's no pictures to go with it. So I'm trying to say it to you first before I show it to you. Y'all see them all though? Do you see it? Imagine all those little slices together, you create this object. All right? It would look something like this. All of them together. And so. You, and then the given is the region on the ground and the fact that cross sections are half circles. That's what's given to you. I'm giving you the region or someone gives you the region and then someone tells you that cross sections form half circles and you're supposed to find the volume. But I don't know why. Someone do like x squared cubed. Hold on. We're going to go through it. No, I'm, I don't want it's time. That's the only reason I'm being. Okay. So I said that cross sections were semicircles. What if I told you that they were equilateral triangles, not semicircles? Then that would be a different object, wouldn't it? Yeah. And so when you did triangles, you would have something like this instead, right? So when you cut through, you get triangle shapes instead of half circles. That's a different object. Let me see if this one works. Why is my thing not showing up? What the hell? Let me run this code again. Should have worked. Triangles, grid, opacity. Why is my opacity not working? Oh, there it goes. Okay. I don't know why that, that was dragging. Okay, so do y'all see that? These are triangles. Do you see the shape of that? It's kind of a cool shape, right? Yeah. What's the volume of that would be the question. If we change it to semicircles, the shape changes, right? Same base, same, same footprint of this object on the ground, but that's a different solid. If we did squares, right? If we did squares, all the cross sections are squares now instead, right? That's a different shape. So next class, what we're going to do, we have to look at each one of these individually. We can't, there's not a generic formula for all of them. You have to look at each scenario in particular and say, okay, let us come up with a formula. But the idea is going to be take one of these slices, like this right here, take that, and imagine that that's a slice like this. Can we find the volume of that one slice? If we can, then we can add them all up with the integral. So we just need a formula for the slice. And we can do that for the square, we can do that for the triangle, we can do that for the semicircle. Yes? 
it's, yeah, it's just the area. All we need to do is really find the area of this face and multiply it times dx. That's all we need to do. Okay. Now the area, in this particular case, if y'all can go if you need to. If this is a square, then this and this, right, are the same? Yes. And this distance from here to here, isn't that just the, the difference between the two functions? Yeah. So this is f of x minus g of x yeah. times f of x minus g of x times dx. Yes. And that's going to give you the volume. For, well, integral of that would give you the volume of that particular shape. But when I change it to something like a triangle, now this is f of x minus g of x, but the area is a little harder. So it's one half base. Base, function. function minus function. function. But height's not as simple. Because height. height is not, right, height's not the sides. It's, so you would have to figure out the height. But it's equilateral. It's equilateral, so we could find, we could do it, right? Yeah. It's just not as obvious as the square was. Yeah. Right? Well, so basically, in the end, you're not trying to just do geometric shapes. I mean, you want to get to a point where you could take that and plug it into some other function that's describing the area of. So, what you're saying is instead of this being a shape up here, this is more arbitrary? Yeah, like it's. That's Cal 3. Just like the thing on the bottom. That's, just that's Cal 3. Right? That's Cal 3. Okay. So, what you do in Cal 3 is that you have. Where are my notes? So in Cal 3, it's exactly that idea right here. You have some region on the ground, and on the top you have some surfaces that create some arbitrary solid up here. Yeah. And we're trying to find the volume of that. Which is the same exact problem as the one we just did, except for the fact that the top doesn't have to be this nice like, right. like square. Like trying, it can be a flowy yeah. whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Try the 7.2 problems. Yeah, and then, you know what, I'm going to have to put a reminder. There's some problems in 7.3 that I think you should do as well. Let me see if it's on our schedule. I don't know if it is. I don't know where it is. I'll send an email. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me remind myself to do that. Let me get by you real quick here. Oh.